CNCF minutes. This video is brought to you by Suborbital, Armo, Cloud Casa, Robusta, Slim AI, and Teleport. In this video, we'll be discussing about Project Argo. Argo is a CNCF incubating project. Now, Argo project is basically to run workflows, manage clusters, do GitOps the right way natively on Kubernetes. So there are different projects when we talk about Argo and mostly people get confused and they think that is only one piece to Argo, which is Argo CD or the other audience will say there is only one piece to Argo, which is the workflows. But there are four different projects within Argo, which are continuous deployment, which is the CD rollouts for complex uh, rollouts of the deployments, workflows mainly for machine learning and stuff, and then the eventing. So there are two types of audience like CD and the rollouts portion are mainly used for the GitOps and CICD purpose. And for MLOps and CI pipeline, the workflows is used and events and triggers are also used with the workflows. So just to elaborate a bit more on all of these, Argo workflows orchestrate the jobs on Kubernetes, create and run workflows on K8s. So all the workflows, so there'll be a chain of steps so these are the like the DAG graphs and each step is a container so each step is a container and then there is a sequence of tasks that is a complete pipeline mainly used with respect to machine learning batch processing ci pipelines so doing the ci cd natively on kubernetes then you have events so events are the event based dependency manager for kubernetes so there are a variety of sources from where the events can be, you know, uh, can be captured like the webhook, S3, uh, PubSub, Slack, and like 20 plus are there. And then triggers can be the Kubernetes objects, the Lambda function triggers, the serverless, and even the workflows, uh, the workflows which are, which we stated above, they can also be uh, triggered. These are the cloud events uh, compliant can be used to customize the complex business logics for the workflow automation and stuff like that. So they are the uh, events. Then you have rollouts. So rollouts are the advanced capabilities provided to your deployments, like the uh, blue green, the canary, uh, progressive delivery, correct picture for the traffic workflow. You can have weighted uh, deployments in place. Then you have uh, automated rollbacks that you can do with rollouts, custom metric query you can do with the rollouts. Uh, ingress controller integration and service mesh integration is also there with rollouts. Now for this particular video, we will be discussing in detail Argo CD, but uh, just wanted to set the context that Argo is not limited to CD. Argo has four projects which caters different use cases. So let's try to understand the problem. So you have a, a continuous integration system. So if you are familiar with DevOps, you know the terminologies of continuous integration and continuous deployment. Continuous integration will be like building the code, pushing the code to Git, then building the image, then pushing the image. So these are the uh, continuous integration part. Then comes the continuation deployment where you have the artifacts which are ready and you deploy them onto a uh, Kubernetes cluster. Now the problem here lies is till the Git build push, it is fine. But once you deploy in your CI systems, in your regular pipelines, you need to have different toolings that can actually do that deployment for you. For example, you would need either uh, Helm or you would need kubectl. You would need even the Kubernetes access because uh, kubectl or Helm, they won't be able to run without a kube config file. Uh, then you have the uh, cloud credentials if you are deploying on cloud. What about the monitoring? For example, if you have deployed, say you have deployed the app A using some tool using kubectl and you have given all the access within your CI pipeline and you then deploy that onto the Kubernetes cluster. But what about like it is deployed over here? Do you get the status back? What happens if it goes down? What happens to all the events with respect to this particular deployment? How you will cater the metrics with respect to that? So all of these challenges are there. And to solve these challenges, there is Argo CD. So this is where the Argo CD fits in. So obviously GitOps is needed and GitOps is nothing to be uh, in, in a very simple terms. GitOps means to 
store the state of your application in git and treating git as a single source of truth for your all your deployments configurations etc so we have seen the problem now let's see the solution with argo cd so argo cd is built for kubernetes that means it is uh, applied on kubernetes the manifest uh, are applied on kubernetes and it has the same gitops approach the very native gitops following the native gitops principles uh, for example a typical pipeline would include a ci so in this case like it is github actions that is there with respect to uh, github itself uh, then github actions is actually building the image on any code change inside the master branch and then it is pushing it back to the git repository or somewhere else or to a different even a different git repository because you don't you might not want to trigger changes to the source code repository always if there is just a configuration config map or a secret change with respect to the deployment so we can always keep our source code and deployment files in separate repository and we can always watch the argo cd for the b1 and we can trigger the ci portions on the a1 and the push portion for the b1 so basically your source code is living here and you are building everything just while pushing you will be pushing to repository b so that all the manifests that are generated they are over here because manifests are not only the deployment file from the source code they can there can be configuration secret services and if you just want to change those then you need not run the complete ci pipeline it will it would save time and effort over there okay so let's get back to uh, the example so you have github actions build you have pushed manifest and then argo cd is watching the manifest so argo cd will pull those manifest and deploy onto the cluster and will manage the state of that deployment so argo cd will be matching the live state from the cube api server and it will be checking the desired state from the git repository and it will always keep a sync between those and then deploy onto a uh, any particular node that is there Again, benefits are very uh, like simple. You have a GitOps approach, like Git as a single source of truth, easily trackable because it's all versioned. Again, it's all versioned, so all Git commits, they can be easily rolled back. Uh, you can have DR setup. So you have, let's say you have region A and you have region B and region A goes down. So you will just be pointing the region B to be to this particular manifest and they'll automatically get deployed uh, to this particular cluster until it is synced back to the desired state which is defined in the git repository uh, sso integration is there uh, multi cluster approach is there like you can deploy the same apps to many clusters like the fleet of clusters there is also like you can have configuration change for the dev stage prod environments for example you have a customized file where you have defined like uh, these are my common um, files that i want to deploy and then for each environment like dev stage these are the separate files that i need to uh, deploy so based on that you can configure uh, argo to behave like deploy separate configurations to each particular cluster so that that is also doable so like the multi-tenancy uh, stuff with respect to rbac is there then you have a fancy web ui so i think it's it's enough to do all the kind of operations that the operator wants to do with respect to continuous deployment operations uh, you also have cli for automation prometheus metrics for the metrics and uh, you have audit trails for app events and api calls uh, you also have pre-sync and post-sync hooks which can be again used for complex kind of mechanisms so uh, argo setup is fairly like simple there are three ways to set up argo one is regular setup then this is the ha setup and then is the core argo we'll talk more about that okay now let's go to the working now uh, the typical working looks similar to a gitops workflow uh, so you have a user who is committing the change to git and then you have repo server which is fetching the changes from the git it is actually a cache cache of the repository which is maintained in the repo server the controller which is there it watches the repo server and it matches the state with respect to the live state from the api server uh, in the kubernetes and the repo server and it maintains the sync between that and it deploys the application on a Kubernetes node. And also you have a UI, so it, it will like keep on sending the instant live uh, notifications with respect to that in the Argo CD UI as well. Now, um, when you deploy Argo CD in HA mode, uh, you get a lot of components that get installed. So you will be having DEX for authentication. You'll be having repo server that is maintaining the internal cache of the repo repository. It's basically the for uh, better performance because not every time you need to pull the whole repository, you just need to get the diffs of both. 
Uh, then you have notification controller. So this was introduced a, as of 2.3 RC. Uh, so 2.3 is yet to release, but the RC can release candidate 5 is, is already out there. And notification controller, which was part of the Argo Labs, I'll tell you what Argo Labs is in the end, uh, is now a project of Argo CD itself. It has like the triggers and the templates uh, as part of them. Then you have the Argo server. Now Argo server expose uh, API, which is consumed by the web, web UI and the CLI. Uh, you have uh, app management and RBAC reinforcement. Uh, you have auth delegation to external providers, uh, then listen and forward for Git webhook events. So all these are done by the Argo server component. It is stateless in nature. Then you have the application controller. Uh, so it uses the Argo CD repository server and to get the manifest and K8's API server to get the live state and maintain them in sync. Uh, also, the Redis HA proxy gets installed when you install that in the HA mode. Now Argo Core. So Argo recently and uh, have developed something a bare minimum Argo uh, for single clusters where you do not require multi tenancy where you just want to get started with Argo. So you get uh, getting started with Argo, no multi tenancy. You can directly install Argo Core. It has like Kubernetes RBAC only managing uh, everything via the CLI and the API. Though you can still install UI on top of that. And yes, you can start small with Argo Core and you can easily transition from Core to full Argo as well. So that's where like Argo Core sits in. Argo 2.3. Now Argo 2.3 is out there with the, with the release candidate 5 at the time of recording of this particular video. So it has many improvements like Argo CD application and notifications which were part of uh, Argo Labs project and now they are internal Argo CD projects. A new sync and diff strategies, ARM images. Now Argo CD can run on Raspberry Pi. So I hope after watching this video, I'll be seeing a couple of tweets with respect to running Argo CD on Raspberry Pi. Then you have compact tree view and app navigation. So easy navigation with that, with respect to all the applications because there are like hundreds of applications which are there within the project and a lot of bug fixes. Uh, there is a complete blog with respect to release candidate that you can uh, check for Argo 2.3. What are the important features? Argo Labs. Now, Argo Labs is, uh, is present on uh, github.com, Argo project uh, slash labs. They are maintained by the community and they are like uh, great extensions and integrations with Argo. And actually some of the Argo, pro Argo Labs project, they become the feature. And the biggest example is the notification that is coming in 2.3. Uh, there are other uh, great examples which are out there like uh, the image updater is there. Argo CD Vault plugin. Uh, it is basically an Argo CD plugin to retrieve secrets from the tools and then injecting them into uh, Kubernetes. So I think that's pretty rad out there like the R&D stuff goes in the Argo labs once the projects get mature and the community, uh, you know, is mature enough the project is mature enough the adoption is there then it, and a proper use case that it, it will function better if it's part of cd then it moves to cd and the project can also live forever in argo community as well like the uh, project lab as well so this is what in a nutshell in a very small short introduction argo cd is how it works what are its benefits and stuff like that let's see uh, argo cd in action so i already have a sivo kubernetes cluster running so if i do kube cdl get nodes I can see that the cluster is up and running. And if I do the kubectl get pods hyphen argo cd, you can see this is the HA setup and I have explained all the components that get installed with respect to argo. Now I want to show you uh, what all commands that I actually ran and what all was installed. So the first thing was very simple. You to create the namespace argo cd and then you just apply with respect to the release candidate because I was installing the release candidate. So I went to the releases page and took uh, that particular command from there and it will be installing all the CRD service accounts, uh, cluster role, role bindings, config maps, secret services and these deployments and uh, stateful sets like the application controller, DEX, notification, Redis, repo server, server, application controller. And then I have patched the Argo CD service with, this, with the load balancer so I can easily access. We can also create the ingress for that. And in order to get the secret, it's very simple. Uh, you can run this command for getting the secret if you want to log into the UI. Now, this is what is happening inside the terminal. Now, let's go back and see the Argo UI. So this is how the Argo UI looks like. So I've just logged in in this particular UI and I can see that uh, there is a default project which gets created and there is nothing inside the project yet. So let's create a new application, give it a name demo. Project will be default. 
sync policy let's make it automatically so they can be automatic and manual auto create the namespace repository url path is deploy this project is available publicly you can try that out as well i will add all the commands that i showed you to the readme as well cluster url namespace let's create a namespace demo and you can see kubectl get ns we do not have a demo namespace yet click create so it is creating and it is syncing now and it has already uh, deployed some of the components so let's go back and see what all things are deployed kubectl get ns we have demo kubectl get all hyphen and demo so we can see the pod is creating uh, the service is already there as a node port and when we go back to the ui we can see that it is still getting healthy and now it is healthy so now if i go back and run this command again so we can see that the pod is also running as well so that is how it is monitoring the active state and doing the health checks within the ui showing that the deployments and the project that you are deploying from git is healthy and deployed onto the kubernetes cluster that is connected over there so there are a few other things that you can do with the ui like if i go here and i go to the deployment i can see the logs so i can see the logs from the container we can see what all containers are there so if there are multiple containers then also we can see uh, we can also edit a yaml file and save that so let's try to access this application so the application is running cncf minutes with argo hope you enjoyed the video as well uh, and the best youtube channel is siam911 and we can submit that thanks to all the members for supporting me in creating this video so uh, armo armo is a kubernetes security built for developers they are the creators of kubescape so check them out robusta making it easy to use kubernetes by troubleshooting and automation providing 50 plus templates already suborbital dev a serverless engine to power your platform they are the creators of atmo making easy to create wasm apps for cloud native cloud casa cloud casa is uh, Kubernetes backup as a service. They have a free tier and then the pay as you go. Teleport, uh, the easiest and the most secure way to access the infrastructure. And Slim AI for building better containerized applications with less friction. Uh, they are the creators of Docker Slim. So make sure you check all the members. They are doing amazing work for the community and the cloud native as well. All the websites link will be in the description. So thank you so much uh, for watching the CNCF Minutes video. If you like the video, please make sure you like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And see you in the next one.